Our previous segment left no doubt that Satan is determined for you to feel helpless and hopeless. But hiding the pain of rejection, abandonment, betrayal, or whatever toxic symptom you have is no solution. Denial just keeps you from being healed by our Lord Jesus. He'll try to balance your feelings of guilt with blame. Let's take a closer look at how this works. Our sin nature resists taking responsibility for sin. Instead, it tries to blame others. Adam blamed Eve for giving him the fruit. And Eve blamed the serpent. Notice the consequence of not confessing their sin and instead choosing blame. They received a curse from God instead of forgiveness and blessing. Our sin nature tempts us to minimize our guilt by blaming others. And our sin nature operates like a balance scale, offsetting feelings of guilt with blame. For example, let's say you become bitter because of what someone did to you. In response to the guilt of bitterness, God would have you forgive your offender. Instead, you blame the person who offended you and hold on to your bitterness. If you blame others, you're missing an important biblical truth. God turns over for torment the people who cast blame and refuse to forgive. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the tormentors until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you, unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Whenever you experience guilt, our Lord wants you to take responsibility for your sin and repent. Consider His mercy when you do this. Confess your sins, realizing God is faithful and just and will forgive your sins and purify you from all unrighteousness. When you confess your sin, you create a healthy memory that's forgiven and cleansed. But blame is one of the ways your mind builds a toxic memory. Don't let that happen. We mentioned in our last segment that the Bible commands us to collectively work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Keep in mind that this command isn't just for adults. It also applies intergenerationally. If you're a parent or grandparent, you need to safeguard your offspring from developing demonic strongholds and toxic memories. God intends for you to do this by instilling His Word in these younger ones, every opportunity you have and wherever you go. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Let's look at how a person develops, beginning at birth. When a child is born, his world is similar to the hub of a wheel. Relationships begin to form, like spokes going out from the hub. The baby becomes aware of his relational connectedness to the world around him, to his mother then his father, and any siblings in the family, even grandparents and other people among the family's relationships 
become part of the life that revolves around this baby. For the most part, everything in the baby's life is to his advantage. He's held when he cries. His dirty diapers are changed. He's kept safe and warm. A whole host of good things happen for him. <laughs> the baby's life is one of instant gratification, and his perspective of people who care for him is positive. But there comes a time in a child's life when boundaries must be established. Left to himself, a lot of hurt can happen. As the baby begins to crawl around, a new world opens up for him. The people who care for him begin to increasingly use the word no. The word becomes a stop sign for him as he learns what it means. Inside our little boy is a sin nature and any strongholds his parents didn't demolish before he came along. Given the opportunity, these will influence his life toward wrong choices. At one time, everything was all positive for him. Now there's this word, no. Initially, most of the no's the baby hears are attempts to stop him from hurting himself or breaking things in the home. As the baby grows, there comes a time when he begins to exhibit unfriendly behavior. Now he encounters a different kind of stop sign in his life. He's stopped for mistreating another person. The baby is being introduced to a whole new responsibility, how he treats someone else. When the baby becomes a toddler, he needs to know the basis to the constraints now being placed on him. This is where the foundations of Scripture need to be taught. So he grows up experiencing the authority of God's Word to guide his life. One of the most valuable lessons of all is, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the Law and the Prophets. Everything in the Bible is summed up in this one command. This is why our Lord directs parents and grandparents to be diligent in helping children learn to make His Word a way of life. As their character is formed in God's Word, they'll be able to scrutinize all incoming thoughts. They'll also be prepared to resist temptation and Satan's attempts to make them helpless or hopeless. Recognize that your child is born with a lifelong challenge to overcome the darkness of his or her soul. Then you'll be persistent to instill God's Word in them so they may live the way of the Lord.